In this video, I'm going to show you how to conduct simple correlation and regression analysis on a data set. So in class, you've probably already talked about what correlation and regression is. So I won't go into theory in this video, but I'm going to show you how to do both of these analyses in SAS Studio. So we're going to be looking at a different data set today. I know you're really excited not to look at sashelp.cars today. So today we'll be looking at fish. So the first thing we're going to want to do before we even get into anything is, as always, we encourage you to explore your data set and take a look at what the data set looks like. So again, we're going to be using um, a data set about fish that is actually in your SAS help library. And first thing I'm going to do is I just want some basic summary statistics and maybe just look at the data. So let's do both of those things. First, let's look at the data set. So I'll go to my libraries. I'll expand my libraries. I will go to uh, SAS help and I'm going to go take a look at the fish data set. So I'll double click on fish and here's the data set. Let me maximize my workspace. So here we have the species of fish. We have their weight. We have um, two different, we have three different lengths of the fish. So three different length measurements. And then we have a height and a width of the fish as well. So, okay, understand it looks like there are some values missing for certain types of measurements. So what I'm guessing here is we had um, each individual fish was uh, weighed at uh, using three different types of, I'm sorry, they were. So what we have here is each fish uh, was weighed and it was um, given a length or a length was taken in three different uh, manners. We have a height of the fish and we have the width of the fish. Okay, so that's our data set. Maybe let's go ahead and conduct some summary statistics on that. So I'll I'll go back to my tasks and I'll go to tasks and utilities and let's just do some very basic data exploration. Let's just take a look at some summary statistics on some variables that we're interested in. So I'll go to summary statistics, expand my workspace, and um, let's go ahead and just um, get summary statistics for all of these variables in this data set. So I'll select all of them uh, and I will click run. And here is my uh, output. So the average weight of a fish is 398. I'm assuming that's probably um, maybe in grams possibly. Um, and all other different types of summary statistics, the standard deviation, uh, the minimum. So we have a, a fish in here that has zero weight. So that's interesting. It could be a fish that's less than one gram, uh, maybe like something like a guppy or a tadpole. Those are gonna be much less than one gram. Um, so yeah, we have some great um, information here that could be interesting to us. We could create some charts and graphs of this, but again, it's always good to explore your data before you go in. So in this particular video, what I'm interested in is I'm very interested in figuring out if there seems to be a close relationship between the width of the fish and how much it weighs. So if a fish is wider, in other words, is it you know a, a wider fish from side to side, um, does it weigh more? So does a wider fish equal more weight? That's what I'm kind of looking at. Now remember, when we're looking at relationships between variables, we don't say that the width causes necessarily a high weight. We're just looking to see if there is a relationship between those variables, and if so, how strong is that relationship between the two variables? So that's what we're gonna start with, and that's called correlation. So we'll start by doing correlation. So I'm gonna go back to my tasks, and under statistics, I'm going to go to correlation analysis. I'll expand my workspace. I already have sashelp.fish selected, but if you didn't, you can go ahead and select that. And I'm going to pick my analysis variables. So uh, here under my analysis variables, I'm going to first add my independent variable. So my independent variable is what I think is um, controlling or is, I don't wanna say causing, but controlling or leading to a change in the output variable. So in other words, I think that a fish's width affects their weight. So therefore my analysis variable is going to be width. Width is the variable that is independent. I think it's the one doing the effecting, right? If you wanna use that kind of word. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and select width and I'm gonna say, what does it correlate with? It correlates with the weight of the fish, okay? so. Um, that's all you really have to do here to produce a very basic correlation analysis. Uh, there are options on the options tab, but um, you don't really have to, to do much there if you're just doing a very simple correlation analysis. However, 
I'm going to select one type of plot that you might want to see, and that's a scatter plot of the variables. So it's going to plot the uh, width against the weight, uh, the width being on the x-axis and the weight being on the y-axis to see what does that relationship look like visually. Again, visual um, exploration is really, really important when you're, when you're trying to do statistical analysis. So where it says types of plot, I'm going to go ahead and just click individual scatter plots. Um, and you have other settings here that you can or may not use. Totally up to you in your instructor's discretion, but I'm just going to leave the rest as is. Now, I could have done this is just a quick note. I could have created a scatter plot using the scatter plot task under graphs and charts. But why not just do it right here all in one task, right? Again, I mentioned in other videos that SAS Studio, you can often accomplish very similar things in multiple different tasks. So why not just do the scatter plot and the correlation analysis all under one task? So I just clicked individual scatter plots and I'm going to run this program and I'm going to get two different um, outputs here. The top output is going to show me what the correlation coefficient is. So here it says uh, width and weight are the correlation coefficient for that is about 0.88741. So that's a really high correlation. Remember, correlations go from negative 1 to positive 1. The closer it gets to either negative 1 or positive 1, the more strong the correlation is. The closer it gets to 0, the weaker the correlation is. So this is a very strong correlation. It's uh, 0.89 you know, if we're rounding up a couple decimal points. So it's a very, very strong correlation. And I can also see that here by my scatter plot. We've got width on the x-axis, we've got weight on the y-axis. You usually, or you always want your independent variable on x, you want your dependent variable on y. So uh, or the, the cause and the response or the explanatory and response variables. So again, if I look at the scatter plot, it looks like certainly as fish get uh, wider, they get heavier. And you can imagine a line being drawn through these points um, that we can find an equation for to use to be able to predict the weight of a fish if we have their width. That's what we're going to do in uh, regression. But again, let's just look at our output real quick again. We have a correlation coefficient of 0.887. Why is it positive? Well, that's because the scatter plot is going in a positive direction from the origin up into infinity in both directions. So it's a positive correlation coefficient. You also see that repeated here in the scatter plot in your inset statistics correlation 0.8874. So, you know, very easy to do. By the way, um, I can go back to data. I can put multiple variables in this analysis variable. So I want to see maybe how also their length correlates with weight. I can also do that. So for example, I can click the plus sign and, oh, I don't know, I can take a look at length one and I can also take a look at height and how all three of these variables correlate with weight. So if I run this program, you'll notice I can say, well, with with width and weight, we already know that one, right? It's 0.887. With length one and weight, it's 0.916. That's even stronger. So the longer the fish, the more it weighs. In height, it's a 0.728. So a little bit lower, but still quite a strong correlation. And here are three scatter plots of all three of those, okay? So really helpful, this correlation analysis task. You can do multiples as well. I can also add more variables to this correlate with box and you can it will cre create what we call a correlation matrix and you can see how multiple variables correlate with other multiple variables so it's a really helpful platform and your instructor will probably um, uh, bring you through different exercises in this uh, task so you get some experience with it but again of course we always encourage you to go through it yourself and play around with it using different data sets all right so We've definitely taken a look at a correlation, and here, in my case, the length one and weight have the strongest correlation. So if I have the length measurement of a fish, it looks like I'll be able to possibly um, predict their weight. So we'd like to be able to come up with a formula or a model to be able to do that. Well, that is called linear regression. So before we do linear regression, we wanna take a look at what that scatter plot looks like. So here's the length, and here's the weight. And one of the questions we want to ask us is, is this a linear relationship? In other words, can I picture a line going through this and you know, looking pretty linear? If I look at this relationship, it's looking almost exponential instead of linear. So that's kind of a cautionary tale that we may or may not want to fit a linear model to this particular relationship. 
uh, when I look at width versus weight. It's still a little um, rounded or bent curved upward, but not as pronounced. Um, this one here is kind of really all over the place in three separate directions. This is the height versus the weight. So before we do linear regression, we want to think to ourselves, should I be fitting a line, a straight line to this relationship? And that's a judgment call uh, that you're going to have to make. And your instructor will talk to you about kind of deciding if a linear model is really what you want to do. That's beyond the scope of this video, so let's just move into producing a regression analysis. So we're going to go back to using our width and weight variables, even though they're not the highest correlation, that's okay. We're going to look at those in a regression analysis. So I'll come back to my tasks, and you're going to find a regression analysis under the linear models category, and you're going to go to linear regression. So I'll maximize my workspace. And there's a few things you're going to have to set up on this task to make it work. All right, first of all, I already have my data set selected, sashelp.fish. First thing I need to do is select my dependent variable. So this is the variable we think that is being affected. It's the outcome variable. So in our case, this is the weight variable. So I'll click the plus sign and I'll select weight. Then down here under continuous variables, I want to put the explanatory or independent variable that I want to take a look at. Be careful not to do it in the classification variable section. Make sure you do it under continuous variables. So I'm going to go ahead and click plus, and we're going to look at the width, remember. So we think the width seems to be affecting the weight. All right, so we've got that done. All right, now we want to go to um, the model, all right, because even though we said that this is the particular uh, columns we want to work with, we have to set one thing up in here. In fact, you'll notice that I can't click the Run button because it's not uh, fully um, ready to do that because we haven't fully specified enough options here in the task. So here under Model, I'm going to click under where it says Model Effects. I'm going to click Edit. And the only really effect that I can look at, effect is the same thing as variable, the only independent variable I can select for this model is width. If you had put other variables in here, we could look at multiple variables and how they affect the weight. In fact, you'll do that way at the end of the course. But for now, I'm only going to select width and I'll click add. By default, the y-intercept is always there. You should not touch that because the y-intercept is a really important part of a linear equation. So we click OK. And now you notice as soon as I do that, the run button lights up and it goes ahead and creates my SAS code on the right hand side and it's ready to run this task. Uh, I just wanted to show you under options, you have other options as well. I'm just going to leave these at the default. You may play around with those in your class, but I'll leave these at default for now. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, click run and I'm going to get my linear regression output. Now remember, this is simple linear regression. We're only looking at one variable up against another variable. So let's just explore some of the results here uh, real quickly. You'll talk about these in more depth in your class, of course. So the first thing I wanna take a look at is um, what is my R square value? Remember, R square is the percentage of the variation that's being accounted for by this linear model. It's kind of almost measuring the quality of this linear model I'm about to create. And so here my R square is 0.7875. That's a pretty darn high uh, R square value. So great, we make note of that. Your instructor will go into more um, detail about what an R-square variable actually is. And then when I go down here, I can take again a look at um, the predicted value and then the weight. And when we say predicted value, that means that if I plug in the width of a fish into this linear model that I'm creating, what will it predict? That's kind of what I'm looking. Remember, I want to be able to use this model that if you give me the width of a fish, I can give you its weight, right? I want to use this kind of as a predictive model. So that's what this graph is showing you here, the predicted value against the weight and how good that is. If it was a perfect model, so if I gave you a width, it gave you the, the fish's weight perfectly, no error whatsoever. All these dots, all these points in the scatter plot would line up against this line perfectly. But of course, no model's perfect. In fact, my, my R square value, remember, is only 0.7875. So it is wrong some of the time. All right, so if I scroll down, I get some other uh, diagnostic plots. I get a, a residual plot. So what the residual, remember, is the difference between the 
observed and the expected. So what does the model say you should get for the weight versus what is the actual weight of the fish? And residuals can be, remember, positive or negative. So this is a residuals plot, and we'll come back to this in a moment. So you have a lot of different output here, and you're going to go over all the different types of diagnostic plots that come out here in your class, but they're right here for your use. So I'm going to scroll back up here to where it says parameter estimates, because this is where we're going to be able to form our linear equation. So if I want to predict the weight of a fish using the width, then my linear model or my equation for my line or line of best fit or least squares line, whatever you're calling it in your class, the textbook refers to it as many different um, things. My equation is basically going to be that the weight of a fish is equal to 188 point, let's just round this, 52 times the width minus 433.29. Okay, so again, if I want to predict the weight of the fish, it's going to be equal to 188.52 times the width minus 433.29. So remember, this is your y-intercept, and this is the um, coefficient for the width variable. So that's it. If you gave me uh, a width of 70, then I would just plug 70 into that equation. So 70 times 188.52 minus 433.29, and I would give you the approximated weight of that fish. Um, then you're gonna go, after you get the linear model, you can plug in any future values of uh, width and get an approximated weight. And then you're gonna go down and look at your diagnostic plots, right? For example, this here's my residuals graph, and you'll talk about uh, what your residuals graph should look like and when to be concerned. This is the distribution of your residuals. Uh, and you notice there is, um, you know, it's reasonably normally distributed, but a little bit skewed to the right. Uh, so, you know, these are all things that you want to look at when you conduct a regression analysis. You don't just want to come in here and say, okay, my R squared value is 0.79, and uh, here's my equation using the parameter estimates, and I'm done. You really want to look at your diagnostic plots to see what that regression was like. Is it a dependable regression? Is it reliable for you know really wide fishes as well as it is reliable as for really narrow fishes? So these are the kinds of questions that you really have to ask yourself and you'll talk about in class. But those are the steps here in SAS Studio to be able to conduct this analysis. So that's all for today and thanks for watching.